Hello and welcome. If you're new to my channel, my name is Christina. And in today's video, I'm really excited to share four DIY projects with you. A little bit of indoor and some outdoor ideas. So I'm gonna talk you through all the materials, including the techniques that I use. So let's head over to project one. I'm just gonna use some white chalk paint as well as these Ikea throw pillow covers. It's gonna be a really simple design and all we're gonna be using is a stencil. And you can use any stencil you want. This is from Royal Stencil Design Studios, which will be in the description box below. For throw pillow covers, Ikea has an amazing choice in all different types of textures as well as colors. But when you want to throw your own pattern or create your own design, and if you wanted to even add color to your own personal decor. So I want to show you a really easy trick that you can use the chalk paint onto fabric. First rule when using a chalk paint to fabric is you're going to use a very, very tiny amount. Now, because I'm using a typical sponge roller, I just really want it evenly distributed all over the roller, but a very thin amount. The trick is not only just using a small amount, but you're gonna do small, small sections at a time. And you're just gonna roll back and forth. I do find that using the painter's tape to adhere my stencil, this way it doesn't move or the paint doesn't get underneath the stencil, very helpful. Or if you have an adhesive spray for your stencil, even better. So the big question is, applying a paint to a fabric, is it going to bleed? Is it going to wash up? Absolutely, and I'm gonna show you a really cool trick to make sure that not only is it adhered to your fabric, it's soft as well as washable. So this pillow cover is 26 by 26, and the stencil is about 20 by 23. But if you have a smaller stencil, not a problem. You can just repeat your stencil pattern and just go by the markings on the stencil. This is super quick, super fast drying, and it's a quick DIY that anyone can do. And again, you can use colors or you can go with your neutrals. Wait for the rolled paint to be completely dry, which will take mm, about 15, 20 minutes. Then we can get to the next step. This is a super creative way also for pillow shams and duvet covers. So I'm just gonna lay it flat with a towel underneath and all you're going to be doing is ironing. You're gonna have it on a fairly hot setting and you're gonna run that iron over your paint and voila, it is sealed and it's completely washable and dryable and it will not remove the paint, it will not bleed and you won't have any issues. I purchased these rattan deck chairs uh, approximately a year ago, and I always had the intention of doing something with them. I just wasn't sure what. First thing I wanted to do was just try to clean them and see if I could just brighten them up, and that didn't seem to really do too much. So I'm gonna have to go ahead and think of something completely new, but still be able to recycle and make something fun out of it. One option is actually to apply a stain to it but I decided I wanted to do something a little bit more regal. So I'm gonna use this no runs, no drip, no air, fusion all in one primer and paint in satin black. I always find it super helpful to do any chairs to start from the underneath first. There's all those little corners and hard to reach areas that if we can get to those first, then flip it around, it will make painting a little bit easier and smoother. And this way you won't miss any little gaps. Using a spray paint, it's always best to do short little spurts of the paint. And you want to keep your paint can and your arm moving in different directions consistently. This way it won't build up into one spot or drip and run. Also working with a rattan, it's, it's weaved. So we want to make sure that the paint is actually getting in between the weave. So by going around, we're going to be doing basically 
a, a very a light coat as a foundation and then we're going to do a second coat as a full coverage coat. I thought by trying the satin it actually might have this nice little sheen to it and I'm really curious to see how it's going to turn out. But I've seen black rattan even um, sold in that kind of color or a darker rattan and I think it actually looks very regal. So if you do find these kind of rattan styles, but they're not in the greatest condition, this is a great DIY to change it over and give it a whole new makeover. Once I completed my underneath layer, my first coat, I just want to let it dry thoroughly before I continue into the second coat. To do two coats, both chairs, it took me three cans of the fusion paint in the spray. But it was a huge bonus to have the paint and the primer in one in the spray so that way you didn't have to do a prime. You just want to make sure everything is really clean before you start and use your spray paint. What an amazing difference between the before and the after just with using a spray paint. Now I thrifted these little end tables quite probably a couple years ago and I've painted them a few times. I now have them painted white and I think I want to try something completely different. So with this Omni Grip, it's an adhesive for tiling, but I'm not going to use tile. I'm going to apply the adhesive down onto the table and you want to make sure it's evenly distributed. For this kind of project, I recommend the metal spatula. This will really help pull it as well as really pull it around nice and spreadable, almost like a whipping butter. The other spatula you're going to need, and you can just use the plastic one, is the one with the comb end on it. And what this is doing is it's actually creating a groove line. So when you ply, it actually wants it to kind of push all of the adhesive into the tile that you'll be using. But we're not using a tile, we're going to try something a little bit different. The nice thing is that we're working on a horizontal, not a vertical, so this is actually going to be really easy regardless if you were using tiles or if you were going to be using miniature rocks. And that's what we're going to use. So we found a few bags of these that you can get at your local nurseries and sometimes you can even find them in your dollar store. But we're just going to go and randomly put in nice and close. You want to actually place them as close together as possible, but it was worth the process. It really actually didn't take very long. So between both me and my husband, probably about an hour to do all three tables. I wasn't 100% sure how this was going to look, but I thought I'd give it a try. And if it worked, I was really looking forward to sharing it with you because this is a great way to upcycle a lot of small little end tables, even if it's for the indoor. We're gonna let these dry overnight, but when we're ready, I'm gonna be using a pewter and this is the tile grout. And it's like a sanded grout. It's so easy to use. Always best to wait about 24 hours to let that tile adhesive dry. Now we're going to go ahead and apply the pewter grout. And it's just like a wet sand. And all of the mixing instructions are right there on the side of the box. It's so easy to use. But you want to make sure that you're getting it right down to the adhesive and you're covering right up to the tops of the rocks. As you can see, it literally shows you step by step on the side of the box exactly what you're going to need to do. The best part is, is you really actually don't have to wait very long as you're getting into your final touches. Every product when it comes to tile grout will have a little bit different in instructions. So depending on the one that you get, just make sure to read the instructions. Once we got everything in, all three of them, then we're just going to let them sit for about 20 minutes. Then what we're going to be doing is using a very lightly damp sponge and we want to bring back the tops of those rocks. All three tables only took maybe an hour. So again, you're going to use a sponge, 
but it's only going to be slightly damp. You don't want to add too much water because you're going to be pulling the grout material back from even in between the rocks. So this is where you just have to exercise a little bit of patience and you're just going to be pulling it and you're going to be rinsing out your sponge quite frequently, but it actually happens very, very quickly. And as you can see, now you can see all the tops of the rocks. Now we're going to let this dry overnight. So just to give it a buff, so that way you have no greens on the top, you're just going to use a cheesecloth or something like a cheesecloth and you're just going to rub back on the tops of the stones and this is going to remove any of the graininess from the grout. I'm going to use the Rossoleum in a matte clear finish as I plan to have these outside, but either way it's really good to protect your tabletops just from any particles like foods or drinks or things like that and again it's just going to kind of protect your work. I ended up doing two coats for each table and in between each coat I would let completely dry. I want to show you a quick and easy way you can take bulky yarn and make it super chunky and do it super quickly. So I'm going to use a 16 millimeter crochet hook. Then I want to use some cream in the three millimeter macrame cord just as a border for the end. So starting with a slip knot, we're going to stitch up 50 stitches, but for showing you, I really want to make this very easy. So I'm going to show you a sample. So I'm going to actually just stitch up 12 stitches onto a chain. So you're just going to grab your yarn and pull it through and that's going to make your chain. For the actual blanket, for the throw, you're going to make a chain of 50. Now, what I want to show you is a simple crochet and it's called a triple crochet. So you're always going to make sure you've got two hoops on your crochet hook then you're going to go into your first stitch what you're going to do is you're going to remove two hoops then you're going to remove two and that is a triple crochet we're going to repeat this it's actually really easy you always have a stitch on your crochet hook and you're always going to be yarning over going into your next stitch pull through you'll have three stitches then grab your crochet hook with your working yarn, pull it through two, then you're gonna pull it through two again. Again, very easy. We'll do that one more time. So you're going to have two stitches, go into your next stitch, take away two, take away two. That first slip knot counts as a stitch. What we're wanting to do here is basically create these, what they call posts. That's what we're going to be stitching with. At the end of every row of your entire blanket, you're going to add two single stitches. Now, what we want to use is the posts. We're going to use the post as a stitch, doing the exact same thing. You're always going to have two stitches on your crochet hook. You're going to remove two, then remove two. So what we're doing is a front post, and we're going to do it in sections of three. So your first three posts, you're going to work from the front of the post doing this triple crochet. When you get to the fourth one, 
then you're going to actually be going to the back of the post. So you're going to turn it around and grab it from the back. So again, the posts are now going to be a stitch that you'll be stitching into. The first row or two are going to feel a little bit bulky and a little bit twisty, but once you get a little bit of weight on with your thicker yarn, it will start to weigh down a little bit and it will be a lot easier to work with. I wanted to make this particular throw really easy by working with the same number. So again, you're going to be working in posts of three. Three front posts, three back posts. Now what we want to do is we want to make rows of three doing the exact same formula. Each new row that you start on the blanket, you're going to be following the same pattern of the front post and the back post for three rows. Then we're going to switch it. So this is why I wanted to do it in threes. Three front posts, three back posts, following that same pattern for three rows across. I always recommend to people just to try a small little sample first until you get orientated with the pattern. So now you can see I have three rows of three front posts, three back posts. Now what I want to do is switch it in reverse. And that's the only thing you're going to need to know for this entire pattern to create this super bulky, thick throw blanket. This is also what they like to refer to as a waffle pattern. And you can switch your colors around, you can make them as throw blankets, or even if you want to use them as pillow covers. Now that I have three back posts, as you can see, I'm going to be starting a new row. Now I'm going to do front posts. So I just want to show you kind of up close exactly why I'm trying to reverse it by doing rows of the same pattern and then switching the pattern. And you'll notice by just how the front post and the back post look. And you can count it, it's really easy to see. And the beautiful thing about this particular pattern is it's exactly the same on both sides. It's quick, it's easy, and it's very relaxing to do so. And it makes for wonderful gifts and they're not expensive. This is a thick chenille yarn, which is machine washable and you can use in the dryer as well. Again, I'm reversing the pattern and now that I'm starting a new section of three rows, so I did front posts, now I'm gonna do back posts. Again, they're just sections of three and three rows. Once we get to the very end of the blanket, it's really easy to cast off. Really important to make your blankets nice and straight is to make sure to add those two extra chains at the end of each, each row that you do. I remember when I started, I used to forget that always. Making it two different colors is completely optional. And as you can see, when you want to start a new ball of yarn, you're just going to tie it really, really tightly together. You're going to pull from all four. Then you're just going to cut off those little tails and then keep stitching. You won't even notice it. I ended up using two balls of each color to complete this blanket. And it was 60 inches in length and 50 inches in width. Once you cut off from your last stitch, you're going to tie a knot into the stitch. And then if there's anything left over, you can just weave it in. Now I love to create a little extra character with my throw blankets and I love using different texture materials. So using this all cotton macrame cord, I'm just going to create a border. Create a slip knot and you're going to go around in each pocket area all the way around the blanket. And what I'm doing here is a simple crochet. You're going to start with one stitch, go into your next opening stitch, grab the working yarn, or in this case cord, then you're going to grab the working yarn, pull it through, and you're going to drop one stitch, then drop both stitches. Thank you so much for watching today's video and please let me know if you have any questions and or comments, leave them in the comment box below. 
I upload a new video every single Saturday and I'm really looking forward to sharing so many more DIYs, furniture transformations and room makeovers with you soon. So if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and notification bell. It's gonna tell you when I upload my next video. And until then, take care and I'm really looking forward to seeing you soon.